these and then we'll add um, we'll, we'll, we'll do a simple bucktail but of course I have my uh, size A good rod thread um, and this is a 950 yard spool acto knife my barber scissors this is some wonderful old French tinsel I do not know the size to me, it looks like a thin or a small, you know, uh, the size that when you're when you're buying some of the modern stuff, how they uh, define it. On this old wooden spool, it says 14 Verney. So I'm wondering if that's the size. Uh, made in France, real nice. I, I love using this stuff. I have four more spools of this. Uh, it's lasted me a long, long time, and, and uh, I don't know what I'll do when I'm use it all up. I do have some more, you know, some French tinsel that's modern, but it, there's something to say about this old stuff. Re I really enjoy using that. It, it sounds funny, but I, I, I like it. So our initial hook is going to be a Mustad 3665A size 4. And then for the trailing hook, it'll be a Mustad 9 four eight four zero also in a size four monofilament and this is just an old Shakespeare 40 pound test what we're going to be concentrating on is you'll see as we're tying um, we're going to use the end of the silver part of the shaft as our measuring point in terms of the size of the uh, the streamer I have marked on my table which may be a little difficult to see but the distance from the base of my uh, universal vice to this mark here on the table is two and a quarter inches um, that just makes it easy for me to measure out the monofilament snip those into pieces and then we'll start building our bodies just snipping my monofilament making the uh, two and a quarter pieces so we're going to start as we prepare these bodies we're going to start with the uh, trailing hook which is a must add 94840 size 4 I'm going to use our size A thread and we're going to start in the center of the shank we're just going to lock that on so half dozen wraps or so just to lock that thread into place. And then we have our monofilament, 40 pound monofilament cut at two and a quarter inches. I'm going to thread this through the eye and extend it right down the shank of the hook before, and we're going to stop just before where the, the hook itself starts to bend. Okay, and we're going to lock this on. We're going to draw our thread back up towards the eye. If you need to, you can just use your fingers to keep that monofilament on the bottom of that shank. And I'm going to bring the thread up and we're going to leave an eighth of an inch gap between the monofilament and the eye. And then we're going to bring our thread back down. Now this wrap was a little loose. There's some gaps in there, which is our, which is just fine, um, because as we now walk our thread back down the shaft of the hook, we're overlapping those threads, we're locking them together, we're filling in those spaces, and then we're gonna bring our thread down just past the point of the hook and then back a couple turns. So there we have it. So then we're going to go to our French tinsel. I'm going to cut a piece. I take a piece that's long enough to do uh, two or three at a time, you know, in a row. It's short enough to be able to manage but long enough to do just a few in a row. So we're going to lock this into place. 
and on, on the side of the shank facing you. Okay, locked into place, and then we're going to walk our thread back up towards the eye. And I like to step off and do two or three wraps on the bare uh, shank of the hook and then walk it back one or two wraps onto itself. So we're going to take our French tinsel we're going to five wraps with this wrapping away from us one, two, three, four, five and then we're going to cross over our thread we're going to lock this into place and just trim our tag. To finish this off, I take a piece of size A thread of a different color. Now this is just an old good rod, still on a wooden spool. It's a nice old spool. And I cut a piece about 12 inches long and fold it in half to make a loop. And I place that underneath my tying thread. Just to do a quick whip finish, just give it about four wraps. And pass the thread up through the loop, and then I can pull it through. And before I remove this from the vise, I have um, uh, Wapsi lacquer-based head cement. And this is just diluted slightly. Um, I want it to um, penetrate the threads as much as possible. So I can coat the body of this with head cement. There you have it. Take that main hook, which is a Mustad 3665A, number 4, size 4. Place it in our vise, and I am going to, again, use my size A thread, and I'm going to start a wrap about a third of the way down the shank. Give it a half a dozen turns or so just to lock it on. And we can return to that trailing hook. I'm just laying that mono right on top. I'm going to adjust my grip just so it doesn't roll so much when I... Just like before, we're going to add our wraps over the mono. And if you have to, give it a twist. Make sure it just stays right on top of that shank. And I'm going to walk the thread up towards the eye and I've stepped off that mono two or three wraps on the bare shank of the hook and then I will start walking it back locking that mono on. I'm providing a fair amount of pressure on this wrap that's why the thread is size A. I can really Add some pressure and bite into that mono. Every so often I just take my fingers off and just reposition that if I have to make sure that it's in line on that shank of the hook. And then we're going to take our wraps all the way down. Just past the point of the hook and then a couple wraps back on itself. And again, we are going to take our French tinsel and on, we're going to lock it on the side that's facing the tire. A couple wraps to lock it on. And we're going to bring this, mo this uh, size A thread back up 
to about the center of the shank. One, two, three, four. Uh, at the point where my five wraps end so I can wrap my tinsel around and lock this on. Okay. Once that's locked on, I walk the thread a little bit towards the eye. It doesn't have to go all the way up. And again, I'm going to finish this knot off the same way as I did before. Um, piece of size A thread of a separate color, different color. Fold it in half to form a loop. And three or four wraps. And I can pass that black thread up through my loop. And pull it through just to do a simple whip, old, you know, whip finish. And again with that thin down, just thin down a little bit. It doesn't have to be super watery, but um, you know, we're not uh, we're not covering the uh, wraps on a jig, so it doesn't have to be. It can be a little bit thin here. We want it to soak into these threads, just to assure, give it a little bit of strength and durability. We're going to tie another dozen or so of these. We'll set this aside to dry and we'll tie a dozen or so and we'll uh, start putting hair on some. Mm -hmm.